In the 1980s, Southern Pacific looked less and less likely to continue service across the Dumbarton Cutoff. It was clear that San Mateo County had to do something about this. In 1988, voters passed a half-cent sales tax called Metro A, which ended up creating the San Mateo County Transportation Authority. San Mateo County would set aside $14 million, $34.6 million in today's money, for the purchase of the Dumbarton Southern Pacific Spur from Redwood City to Fremont. In 1991, they would sponsor the Dumbarton Commuter Service Feasibility Study. In early 1994, Caltrans would give a loan to Sandtrans to purchase the entire right-of-way for $6.9 million, equivalent to $13.6 million in today's money. Three more studies for commuter rail came in the following years, up until the bridges collapsed. Please exit to the rear door. Doors open. In a great way to celebrate the new year, at 7 p.m. on January 3, 1998, the Menlo Park Fire Department responded to a report of a fire at the edge of Palo Alto, near an abandoned gun club. The fire was initially expected to be coming from the building due to the homeless people often seen in the area. But when firefighters arrived, they saw thick black smoke emanating not from the abandoned building, but from a spot much further towards the bay. Firefighters were surprised to see that nearly a third of a mile of the Dumbarton Bridge trestle was being devoured by flames. I'm talking about the supports down to the water line and the rail deck itself. The fire was so bad that the Dumbarton Road Bridge next to it had to be shut down because of the smoke. Luckily for, well, no one, Wooden railroad ties are often treated with creosote. For those of you who are not track maintenance employees or chimney cleaners, creosote is a highly flammable and toxic product. Creosote functions as a wood preservative that's derived from various types of tars. Long-term exposure to creosote for humans through inhaling could cause cancer. And with the Dumbarton Bridge burning, it is clear that the stakes were high. Firefighters rushed towards the bridge, but there was one problem. As you may have noticed, accessing the bridge was kind of difficult. Since there was limited road access to the edge of the bay, it was difficult to get fire trucks anywhere near the bridge. From the nearest fire truck, crews had to attach a 4,000 foot long line just to get to the water's edge. Furthermore, the depth of the bay around the rail trestle wouldn't allow for conventional fire or coast guard boats to get close. That's right, Banks Rail. The middle of the channel was 50 feet or 15 meters at mean low tide, with a mean high tide variance of 6 feet or 1.8 meters. Preliminary test piles had shown the mud was 2 to 4 feet, 0.61 to 1.22 meters deep in the middle of the channel and 16 to 18 feet. 4.9 to 5.5 meters deep at the shoreline, atop a layer of sand and gravel ranging from 15 to 20 feet, 4.6 to 6.1 meters deep. So yeah, to put it simply, not only was there low tide that night, but on top of that, the bay in this area is very shallow. This meant that pumps had to be floated into the bay, where firefighters on fan boats would be putting out the fire. The entire night, crews stayed out trying to put out the fire. When the tide went out, burning timbers would fall from the weakened bridge onto the muddy bay floor. And when the tide came back in, it would carry these burning timbers and float them all the way down the bay. Imagine seeing dozens of small fires just floating in the bay. It was like something out of a Viking movie. The morning after the fire started, crews loaded a fire truck onto a special rail car to get it closer to the bay. With this rail car rolled closer to the bridge, Finally, the fire was able to be put out, or so they thought. After continuing to receive multiple complaints about smoke, three days after the fire was put out, fire crews were sent out again for investigation of the bridge. Upon further investigation, crews discovered that the structure was still burning 20 to 30 feet underground. This meant that in order to extinguish the bridge, the pilings had to be dug up. It was probably one of the more frustrating events I've ever had to deal with. In the end, no active electrical equipment was found near the bridge, and there wasn't lightning present the night the fire started. Therefore, investigators believed that arson was the cause of the fire. Unfortunately, this was never proven, and investigators would label the fire suspicious. Since, well, all the evidence of foul play was burnt and floated all the way to Oakland. Yeah, you're not gonna find much. 
My first thought for the reason why the bridge burnt down was because of an insurance scam. But then I remembered that the struggling Southern Pacific Hello. already sold I the like bridge money. off to Samtrans. So that could be it. Now, realistically, a pyromaniac probably burnt down the bridge. But what if it was an extremely, and I, I mean extremely, because normal people just don't go around burning bridges. Well, physical ones at least. But what if it was burnt down by a disgruntled Nimby? This theory somewhat makes sense, as there were, and still are, Nimbys that are against the Dumbarton Rail Corridor. The only problem is, those Nimbys predominantly reside on the East Bay, which is the opposite side of the part of the bridge that got burnt down. Of course, a resident could drive across the bay, then make the hike on foot towards the bridge and light it on fire, but come on. It's clear that Sam Trans just wanted to get a head start on replacing the trestle approaches. That's all. In the year 2000, there was a bill that included funding for Dumbarton commuter rail services branching off of the Altamont Quarter Express route. The bill suggested that these trains could be up and running by as early as 2003. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, that was a good one. This bill ended up creating Caltrain's Baby Bullet service in 2004, but unfortunately, funding for the Dumbarton Rail Corridor was removed from the bill. Also in the year 2000, the Caltrain Joint Powers Board voted to become the sponsor and the operator of the Dumbarton Rail Corridor, something that they would soon regret. Over the coming decade, a few more feasibility studies would come out. Each time a new feasibility study would come out, the project got more expensive. This is because each feasibility study would make the project more elaborate. By the time we got to the second feasibility study in 2003, the project called for two completely new bridges. On top of that, in 2009, the East Bay cities would divert some of the funding for the Dumbarton Rail Corridor to the BART Warm Springs extension. After Alameda County failed to pass a transportation sales tax in 2013, majority of the East Bay cities would just give up. This meant that funding for the Dumbarton Rail Corridor was dropped from future bills, leaving Caltrain to be one of the few agencies keeping the project alive. Well, actually, there was Facebook in 2015, but that, 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 that didn't really go anywhere. The reason why East Bay cities such as Fremont aren't supportive of the project anymore is because they don't want to be labeled as a pass-through city. You know, a city that gets passed through and people don't actually stop there and spend money. Which is kind of dumb, right? Because East Bay cities, especially Fremont, would become more of a transfer hub for passengers traveling all across the bay. And by the way, this is their legitimate reason, so I'm a little bit confused on where they got that from. But it is speculated that Fremont could be in opposition to the rail project because it would mean that some economic developments, such as commercial developments, would move to the peninsula. Which, I mean, if that is the case... I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog that I have ever heard. Alright, okay, this video is getting long. Um, part 3? 300 likes? Part 3, 300 likes? I th Part 3, 300 likes. I, I, yeah, I, I, I still really want to go over the future plans of the Dumbarton Rail Corridor, so, you know. Part 3, 300 likes. Yes. With that being said, if I earned a like and subscription, I love you. And if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching.